following announcement has been paid for by the Celtic World Order. Hello, how are we all doing? Welcome back once again to Celtic World Order. I am always a Steve O'Mahon and it's a warm welcome once again to anybody that's deciding to watch this wee video that I've put up later on today. I know it's a bit of a strange one, I know it's a wee bit out the box if you will for sort of Celtic podcast, Celtic content, but you know what, I thought to myself, why not, let's do something a wee bit different, let's have a wee bit of a laugh because as much as we're passionate and we love talking about football, sometimes we also like laughing at football, sometimes we like analysing football, sometimes we like listening to what people actually think about football and then giving our views on that. So off the back of, you know, another disastrous um, result, as it were, for our rivals in this title race, I thought we'll do something strange. We'll do, we'll do something, as I said, a wee bit out the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to a wee bit of the Clyde One Super Scoreboard. I mean, listen, I normally avoid that with the plague. Many times ago, many, many moons ago, I used to listen to it and I dare say I even phoned it in a few times because I wanted to try and inject a wee bit of common sense into it, which was normally a bit of moon howling. But I'm pretty sure, as we've seen from social media, it's been awash with some quality content and some funny content as well. And everyone's building up to this and anticipating what's going to be said. So I thought, let's stick it on. Let's actually see what's being said. And let's see what I think of it and if I think some common sense has actually been said and maybe as some home truths actually been said or are we going to get blind denial and staunch loyalty? Either way, listen, I'll say this once, I'll say it twice and I'll say it again. It is merely a drop in the ocean what happened the other night. Yes, fortunes have went our way recently with other results. And as I said as well, we're perfectly entitled to have a wee bit of a laugh, a wee bit of a joke here and there. You know, we suffered it. We were dealing it out for a while, giving the laughs out when we were cruising the league and then when things went sour, we had to just knuckle down and take it ourselves because if you're going to be giving it out, then you need to be able to take it as well. And no way is this any different. It's just almost came a wee bit full circle. We're not quite over the line yet, but as I say, it's, it's lighthearted humour. It is what it is. You know, we're perfectly entitled to enjoy this moment, but maybe it'll come back and bite us in the uh, bum later down the line. Touch wood, I certainly hope it doesn't. But as I say, it's just a wee bit of fun, isn't it? Anyway, before I put it on, because I'm going to stick it on and we'll talk over it, um, just, you know, if you like what we do here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, get a subscription hit. If you like this, if you like what you're seeing in here, thumbs up. If you want to extend our reach a wee bit, Give us a share. You can also check us out X at CWO Pod eighteen eighty eight. Me, Paddy, and our other associates who have been on the pods handles will be in there, and you can get us at Facebook at Celtic World Order Podcast. That's it. Let's see if this works because we're going to put it through here. I'm not quite sure what the audio is going to be like, but what I'll do is I'll play it. We'll see what's been said. I'll maybe turn it down a wee bit, and I'll pass comment on it. Let's try this out. I think we'll get a lot of disappointed Rangers fans on this forum tonight. Come on then, 0141951102. What a night we have in store because there is a lot to get through, Rangers fans. It's kind of a rerun of Monday, except it's worse because it's the second time within a week, isn't it? So that is the second time within a week. Last night, where did it go wrong? What did you make of the performance? What did you make of Philippe Clement's post-match comments? And ultimately, very interested to hear what they think of that. Those are the core points, but I'm sure we will stray off into various other directions, and you have to call the number to do so. Oh one four one. Let's see what's been said. Um, certainly, I saw some Rangers-based outlets that described it as dog meat. I certainly don't know if I'd go as far to say dog meat, but. It certainly wasn't good in the eye, was it, as I covered last night. Um, but I keep saying it, we've got Dundee around the corner, so listen, let's not scoff at that result because they looked at like a team that could handle themselves a wee bit. But I'm interested to hear what people seem to think of the manager's message from because, come on, was saying that he thought that things were was a good performance and he also actually played off the notion about the result, saying... The performance was important. It's all about results, no matter how they come. Win ugly is winning. 
glorious, good performances and not getting a result is just second place, isn't it? What's he saying here? I think Celtic were favourites. It's funny how the bookies have went because it's swayed between. Obviously, we were favourites and then as we started to fall behind, Rangers overtook us at very slight odds. I think they were point one five better off with Celtic being almost evens um, to almost as much as 2-1 to one in some cases. In fact, that would, when we're talking about Rangers, but evens, Celtic were at least 2-1 to one upwards at times. But it'll be interesting to hear what they're saying here because he's just not singling out a couple of players there that we spoke about. The guys like your Tavernay, Goldson and Lundstrom. So it'll be interesting to see what the fans are thinking of these guys here. I've seen them be called as glorious losers. I've been seeing them called as wasters. And people want them the F out of club. Strong words, isn't it? It's amazing how the narrative can suddenly change over time. And a fair play to Gordon Dale, no matter what you think of Gordon Dale, I always think that he's very um, honest in what his assessment of the team is. Um, he has, as I've said, he's gave a wee bit of praise to come on in the past, I've noticed. He certainly said that um, they've became a better team. As I, you know, I've touched on this before. I think with regards to their performances, listen, there's no doubt that they are better than they were when they were in a real bad place before they came to them. But he hasn't reinvented the wheel. He's been beating teams that you would normally expect a Rangers team, team to beat. And now sitting on two wins and eight. And guess what? Those two wins came against Hibernian, who are probably on the cusp of sacking their manager, who failed to make the top six. So, yep, you know, take that at face value. It looks as if things are coming into fruition now, where fans are actually beginning to wake up and question the credentials of their manager. I'm seeing a lot of concern around, does he have what it takes to fire them up? And, you know, yes, he was successful when he was in Belgium, but as he moved over to Monaco, I'm not comparing Monaco to the Glasgow Fishbowl, but when he was out with home comforts, when he was out with a sort of peripheral league, if you will, with a bit less eyes on it, a bit less stress, a bit less expectancy on it, he was doing well and he was winning. But again, he was winning with teams that had the, some of the best financial strength in that league. When he moves over to Monaco, it's not quite working. So what are we going to get? And what do you make of that? Let me know in the comments. What do you think of that fine? To the tune of £186,000 because of the call-offs, but apparently 120000 of that have been suspended for a team who are currently circa £3 million in the red. That's pretty bad, eh? Let's listen to Andy and hear what Andy's saying. How are you doing, guys? Uh, I'll try pathetic, same as last Sunday. Uh, even more pathetic. I, I, I mean, I, I like coming, but I just don't know what he's, he's saying. There was a positive reaction. I mean, where was the positive fair. reaction last night? He can't believe it's non-existent. He was on the ball and he couldn't do anything. A he golden was, deceiver. Was that's what he can't realise. I mean, that's two games I've been watching now. You know, you may be going to watch enjoy football, but I enjoy that at all. Isn't it? And Sunday is new massive. Absolutely. I, I don't think Cantwell... Fun fact, though, because... Um, they play Hearts, and yeah, as ever, there was going to be a time that you would expect Hearts to maybe step up, do something. You know, we've got a double wounded Rangers now, um, two terrible results, fan unrest, manager rambling. They look disjointed, they look there for the taking. But as we know, Hearts always seem to crumble when they should be actually looking at This is Hearts' season. They're cemented on for third, but they could get to a final now. I'd like to think that and I'd expect that to be against us. But whether it's against us or whether it would be against Aberdeen, they should be looking at both ourselves and Aberdeen and thinking they can be taken. We can get a cup here in the trophy. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. However, fun fact, they've never actually beat Rangers at Hamden. So don't hold your breath. If you're a Rangers fan, you're sitting here, you're looking at this manager who's been absolutely brilliant. Has he? He's galvanised them, he's made them win um, 
games, in my opinion, that they only should have been winning. You know, in the years gone by, you expect Celtic, you expect Rangers to go and beat the best of the rest with a couple, maybe an odd result where they drop points against Hearts, maybe Hibs, you know, you maybe get one shocker. But yeah, he's just making them win games that should be winning. In terms of big games, yes, they won a cup final. That is a big game, I suppose. And it was against Aberdeen. But aside that, what a result against Betis is that the brilliant performances you know, it's quite amazing how a narrative can be spun, is it not? And what you end up with is, you know, people living in La La Land where they're not actually convinced in their own mind. They, they sort of just get the blue specks or the green specks or whatever side as you support on and they only look at the positives, which is we were absolutely terrible under Bill. We're now winning games, but they're not really focusing on the results because... Bar that 5 0 against a pitiful hearts again, there's never really been a proper marquee result, has there? I'm not sure about that. Nope, you're not. Nope. Does it feel like the title race has been blown, Andy? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll put a big dent into our own sales, you know what I mean? I'm not saying, I'm not giving up now, but we just, we'll, we'll go to turn the corner and it, it's going to come on Sunday. We've got to just do something, I don't know, I don't know why he didn't start with Tondo last night, how did he start? But we've just got to turn the corner quickly. I'm not giving up now, but obviously Celtic are, are favourites now. Celtic are favourites now, three points ahead with how we usually kick on at this period of this um, season. One minute the problem started, Bakayoko with an early chance given by the post. And so they should. I'm going to give you a really weird example here, right? And bear with me. See if you start a new job. It's the senior guy. Where's that going? Your manager, your line manager, whatever. They come to you and say, right, expectations, right? Your role is this. You're going to do this. Your targets are this. These guys have got, I don't know how many managers sacked. And True. it's a running joke that they three would get Guardiola to sack. It's probably not far off the truth. That's <laughs> maybe a wee bit. That's a good one. Uh, I agree with that. Before my lady guys come back in the final. Sorry, so if it's my show. It is well sure on the phone. You carry on, don't you worry about that. Let me just uh, turn them down so I can kind of see where it's going. My point at this point is Golson played one of his diagonal balls last night. He's been doing that since 2018. Golson's been. Um, trained to basically shell balls, so I'm not surprised that he played one of these diagonal balls. It's diagonal, it's forward, it's, you know, bunt, punt, 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 right up the pitch, hope making can hit some of the or that. That's, that's Rangers for seasons upon seasons. It's chaos ball. I'm going to turn this chap down a wee bit. Two callers in, we can, listen, we know where this is going. You can hear and fans' voices, they're absolutely scunnered. And again, listen, you know, we're doing this as a wee sort of reaction, a wee social experiment, if you will, but I'm pretty sure, you know, this is, this is what some of our fans were sounding like that were phoning us in when we were on a slump. But no, you know, he does make a good point. Goldson, Tavernier, you know, these guys, I said time and time again, see as long as one any manager that comes in this door doesn't have the brass to drop these guys and or sell them. See as long as they continually get recycled into new squads and get a couple of decent performances to rerun their fans over again. Celtic will continue to win trophies. They are serial losers. Goldson's had a couple of injuries. He's slowing down. He's coming to the end of his time. Tav was talking to a friend today about him. Yes, they're in a rock and a hard place because if you take away his goals and assists, that's largely holding them up. Now, you can talk about the penalties and you can say the amount of penalties you get. But see, at the end of the day, they're getting them. What I said is, see if you took away his penalty. Say they just had, I don't know, Dessers or someone else on those penalties. They'd still be getting the penalties, right? But his goal tally would be significantly less sexy on paper, would it not? 
one thing he would bring would be some assists and you know he's always dangerous from a direct free kick but see if Rangers fans ask themselves that question let's just forget that he scored the penalties because we should have a professional footballer should be able to step up and take a penalty albeit Celtic with their own issues with that is what he is left over from that tally worth them continuing to risk how bad he is at the back I don't know They should be. They didn't concede last night, but the amount of times that they were caught out against a better team with better finishers, they would have paid the price. They do. One of the biggest problems with Goldson is Goldson will be one of their highest earners. It's all right and easy to say, get rid of these guys, but they've, they've worked herself into a shoot there with that one, haven't they? Take your pick for the, those um, eight games that we spoke about. He's been culpable all the time, as has their captain. Yes, he's had a couple of penalties. He's had a couple of goals as well during that period of time. But if you ever look at them conceding goal, he's always a guy that's running back, blowing, huffing and puffing, balls in the net, he's shouting at folk, pointing at other folk, hands in his head, or his head in his hands, should I say. <laughs> When has he ever had someone to push him? That's the question. Can you recall the last time they legitimately had someone that could push them? Now, I know Pope will direct me to Patterson, but let's face it, that was never going to happen. That's a couple of years ago. There was still a lot more in Tav's legs at that time. Of course it does. It's similar to the situation that we had. We had guys that were there and we held on them for far too long. They'd outstayed their welcome. It's sometimes hard to cut the cord. It's sometimes hard to send folk and tell them to flee the nest, but it needs to be done. In order to kick on in football, you need to evolve. See, this is interesting because I'm not sure if this really is a watershed moment because how many times over various seasons, bar the one season that we all don't want really to talk about, have we seen this? It's been nearly men, it's been excitement, peaks and troughs and then inevitably when it's came to the crunch moment, the championship rounds have started to become undone, they became unstuck and it's been another disaster for them. But then what happens is when they're needing a new contract or when there's a new manager come in the door, they all try like a bear, no pun intended, and um, suddenly they're the best thing since sliced bread again. Golden deceiver. There we go. And let's not, let's not sniff at that, no matter what. We want to think. It's perfectly acceptable for me. I'll take that every time. Give me another run like that. The thing is, I think with regards to that, Rangers winning that title in the COVID season, that for me was them hitting their peak. That was that team. That's when they had reached their maximum capacity. And it was really time then for them to get rid of a lot of guys. Fortunately for us, they held on to a lot of those guys and they let them down. Obviously, we better players. We started to pick it back up. But guys always stayed their welcome. And then they managed to get to that final. And again, that was them. That was just the last vestiges of them hitting peak capacity. And the tank's truly empty. Or as in the cases we're seeing from Clement, the ketchup bottle is now empty. 
fail you. Rangers are only a team, and I'm not saying they're going to. They've still got an opportunity to win a treble here. Now, they do. Let's not kid ourselves on, and that's what I'm saying tonight. There's nothing more than a wee bit of fun and a social experiment. Let's keep our counsel. It's it's basically a wee bit of fun, this, but I'm not foolish to the fact that we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a game to win at the weekend for a semi-final, but realistically, in my mind, we've got three games in the league to we must win. Win those, and the league is done. Not interested in the travel. So the thing is, what I'd like to say just there that was touched on, are these guys serial losers? Well, if we're being completely honest and frank, yes, they are. And that's the biggest concern. Again, when I was speaking to my friend today, he made an excellent point. He spoke about mentality. He spoke about what's been instilled into these players when they come into the club. Now, Cal McGregor might not be the most lively, you know, boisterous kind of, you know, looks like a leader or whatever, but he is professional, he's been at the club for so long, he knows what it means he knows the background, he's, he's been through he's seen previous captains, he's seen guys under the tutelage of Bruni, he knows what it means and I have no doubt in my mind when any player signs for Celtic, he takes them aside and he basically shows them, he drills it into them and then not just that the way that we do things at the club the professionalism, the hunger, yes we have our behind the scenes things with the board and some transfer and that but in general, the ethos, the way that we want to tackle, the way we want to tackle our football, we want to do our football, go about our work, it's a deep set level of professionalism. It's excellence that we strive to have. And you can look at a guy and you can believe in a guy like Cal McGregor because of everything he's done and what he's won. On the flip side of it, I don't see... Taverni has been a particularly inspiring guy. Now, not all captains need to be big, strong, shouty guys in the park, but he comes in and just says, oh, you know, welcome to Rangers. Well, I'm just, obviously, just making that up, but what, what, what can he really, what can he really tell you about what it means to play for Rangers? To meaningfully win championships, trophies. Yes, he's got to European final. Yes, he's got, you know, a handful of trophies, but in the large scale of things, what does he really have to reflect on of modern, current, relevant success? There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing there. And you only need to look at that when you listen to Butland and his interview the other day. And it's just paint by numbers nonsense, isn't it? It's about oh, this history, this club and the numbers on the wall and all this stuff. He's not talking about anything relevant. He's not talking about anything recent. He's not talking about anything new. He's talking about a bygone era. He's talking about the past. Oh, the marble staircase and the wooden panel and, and the traditions of the club. It's all waffle. It's all spin. It's all nonsense. Celtic can come in and sign a player and they can have a guy like Brendan Rodgers sitting down. Yeah, he might spin him a yarn. They might, you know, do that charm offensive thing. But he's got a lot of relevant, recent, pertinent stuff to talk about when players want to sign for us. He can point to success. He's the guys that have came to the club, moved on to bigger, you might, some might say better, certainly wages, league, prestige. You know, that's what we can sell players. We can sell them recent history on top of, you know, a grown history. 1967, show them that big cup. Yeah, do you know what? That is years and years and years and years ago, but it's still sitting in there. But that's not what we're living off. Some other fans might say we are, but do you know what? You're a, it's something that we should be proud of, but we don't need to constantly look at what was once. We can look at what was recent, a treble from the previous year, a double from the previous year, a quadruple treble, all within this last 10 years. Bit different, isn't it? That's why we're in two different worlds here. Celtic have got an inset group of winners with that mentality. Rangers have got a very wishy-washy identity at present. 
it's all based on old school tradition, suited and booted, all that kind of stuff. Celtic are literally about getting down to business, winning, delivering, and yeah, do you know what? We're not without our own faults. There's vast improvements that we need to do, certainly in how we invest in that squad to make the step up. Our European record, let's be honest, recently, it's, it's pretty embarrassing. But do you know what? We can still work on that. And even other factors, the financial footing and stuff, we've got a lot to sell. the game before which doesn't surprise me though um, just, just on the Philip Clement's uh, words after the game I don't think he believed and I don't believe no, I don't. he said 100% he was only protecting his players uh, Clement came in five months ago he's got the best of the players in what he possibly could but now that he's settled in I think that's stopped and I think over the last two games Philip Clement is pro- will probably find out absolutely more about his players too than the other will and you'll realise that we just have not got the players that are mediocre. I think uh, every manager that Rangers have had in recent times have found that out, haven't they? You get the new manager bounce if you will, and you can get them working for you. Do you remember a, a couple of seasons ago he was, what was it, as the best on earth? He isn't a creative player, there's not a creative bone in his body. He's robust, he's physical, he's, he is what he is, he's an old school player. See, this really surprised me, this talk about long balls. Rangers' uh, game tactics, going as far back as Gerard, or even, even before that, was, as I call it, chaos ball. Get three quarters of the way up the pitch on the wing, and shell into the box. It surprises me that he thinks that this is a new thing. Nope. And this comes back to what I was talking about with guys like credibility and guys like, yeah, exactly, like guys like a Cal McGregor who have been there, seasoned in the trenches. New players can come in and look to someone like him, believe in him, and know that he's been there and he's had those fights. How can you look at Tav and think that when the going gets tough, he's going to pull you out a hole? He might get you a few results and pull you out a hole with a free kick or something. But I'm talking about dragging a team up with the scruff of the neck and making them believe. Because if he doesn't believe in himself, then why are people going to believe in him? You know, this is a great point, and I don't mean to um, sort of bring it back to basics of this, a Celtic man, a Rangers man type of thing, but I was talking to uh, our friend Liam Greenwell about this, and he made a very, very good point. He says, Rangers have lost a wee bit of their Scottish identity. And I, I never really thought about that before, but I do believe it. Now, I'm not saying that it should be getting in guys that are, you know, just, oh, my Rangers man, like a holidays and all that kind of stuff, but come back to the management position, folk will laugh at this. I genuinely think that the manager for them was Derek McInnes. The folk can scoff at that all you want, but he did well with an Aberdeen. He did well, he's doing well at Kilmarnock. What he would install is, is what I've been talking about, that importance of what it means to play for Rangers because he's been there and done it. Yeah, again, from a bygone era, from years gone by, but He's done there, he's loved it, and he can really drill that into players. There's nobody really in the Rangers squad that have that. The important part. I don't know what he saw. I really don't. It's about Pedro, isn't it? Uh, also on a pitch that, that 
a bit. The caravan keeps moving as the dogs bark. What is he talking about? I don't think they did. That's why they get booed off the park. There's always room for improvement. Paint by numbers. Generalised statement. We didn't win. We can be better. Of course. We could have got three points instead of one. Interesting to hear if he lets this boy come back in. I'm, I'm interested to hear what he says because he's he has he has bang on it. He's right to question that. That's what I don't want to hear from my manager with five games to go, including a semi final. When I mean, we've just won two games in eight. It is a fine balance, and I'll come back to that once I say dies off because I, I mentioned that about us and we went into our slump with, with Brendan, perhaps maybe throwing some of your guys under the bus. Let me just down him there for a wee bit. This is what I think is quite interesting. Now, I spoke about what I thought was Rogers and um, some of our missteps this season. Um, what he done is we came in at that early start of the season and we all knew that the squad was it was weaker than we had previously. Um, he basically came in, done his thing. He made average players believe and he got average players performing better than anybody would expected to can. We massed that huge lead. It wasn't then until we started to get towards the transfer window and he was constantly almost belying that belief that he had in, um, he put into them and installed in them by saying we need more quality and it was talking about essentially we need better players, we need more variation, we need a higher quality on the bench. Now, from a mindset standpoint, if you're a player and you've been getting built up, built up, built up with your, your manager, and then all of a sudden the rug's pulled under you, and you're told essentially that you're you're garbage and you're not good enough. I'm not surprised that we went into that um, slump that we did. Now, yes, you you should know what it means to play for this club and include guys like who have been praising. Cal McGregor really should have been picking those guys up with a scruff of the neck and dragging us through, but we didn't. We all sort of sank for a wee bit. I think that's the one thing that Rogers might, well, what you certainly will look back on, hopefully, if this season is successful. And even if it's not, and he'll know, for a guy whose man management is characteristically very good, that was very, very poor. He literally could have sank your ship at that point. It is. Points win prizes. This is new, that's the first time we'll be hearing this. That's damning. I would be terrified if this was one of my players. For me, those two things should uh, be hand in glove. Belief and togetherness. Those should be like a marriage made in heaven. I'm not sure how you can have one but not the other. It's the sounds of a player who's confused, disenfranchised. Those are, those are 
wow, that's the first time I've heard that. And um, yep, as I say, I'm I'm shocked. It's music to my ears as a Celtic fan because if that's one man coming out when you know the one thing you don't do is ever show weakness. And I thought certainly in our cursed season, as we don't want to talk about, one thing that we showed too much of was weakness. Um, when Neil Lennon was coming out and he was talking about unrest and players not wanting to be there and stuff like that. See whether that's true. It's important at this stage to try and remain positive, to try and put out a, a, a sort of image that all is well, even if you know it's in fire all around you and everybody in their granny can see it. You've got to at least play the game. I, I don't know what Philippe come on would be thinking after he heard that because it completely belies what he's just said. He's come out and says that there's this belief and that everybody's together. And then you've got one of your players who's only recently started getting into the team, by the way, coming out and essentially doing what their captain done, if you remember infamously a couple of seasons ago in the match day programme, saying that it, they crumble when the pressure's on. That's what Dijon Sterling's just done there. That's a massive own goal. And to me, that is very, very interesting. What he's just done is sent out a signal to all the opposing fans, all the opposing managers, all the other teams that they're coming up against that should be now circling like sharks smelling blood. Because that that's a that I think's a, a sort of bit of naivety. It's a young player who sounds uncomfortable and he said something he probably shouldn't have. Fair play, mate. Absolutely. Fair play. Uh, and it is. It really is. State the obvious, mate. So the Celtic. The next game against Rangers is huge. State the obvious. If both teams go into that, having won their previous two, that is title decider. I think we knew that anyway. St Mirren, to me, I saw enough of them at Celtic Park to think that they can definitely cause Rangers problems. Organised, physical... I said that when I was talking to Liam and Paddy about the game. Dundee, to me, are very much in the mould of St Mirren and Motherwell. And guess what? Two of those three teams have given Rangers a bloody nose and taking points. Wild. Think about when we were dropping points, when we lost that eight point lead. We were getting laughed at, we were getting absolutely buried daily. It's only taking this two results back to back for critical mass to really hit and people to start talking about what's actually going on at Rangers at the moment. Absolutely. Variation, options, quality coming back. The only player I think really at the moment in time that I look at in the Rangers squad that I think could start to score goals from is Seema. There you go. I totally agree with what uh, he's saying there. I do, I do agree with Dale there. Um, what, what he's saying is true, yes, and let's not always say that. Rangers still can win a treble here. Nothing is won. 
but if you are looking at current form and those sort of comments from the manager and would be surprising we just heard from Sterling, you've got to be concerned about their ability to do that if you're a Rangers fan. Where's Hugh Keevans been near them? Because I've noticed he's not been on recently. He was the man that said that um, Rangers were going to go unbeaten. It was a guy that said when um, it was half time against St Mirren at Parkhead that that's it, the title's done. He must be he must be in hibernation. He must be absolutely with the fear to come out. But they wheel him out before the game against Rangers. It's amazing how a narrative can change in such a short time. We had a gradual, slow, torturous erosion of our lead and it got dragged out. This has been undone in, what, 11 days? It is, Mark. You know, people won't like me saying that. Folk won't like Wilson saying that. But it is, and that's what I said at the start. Forget what this wee video here is. It's just something different. But I'm not sitting here to go because I'm just interested to hear what's been said. Because we do have work to do and we've got big games. We've got big games against teams that have taken points off us. Hearts is massive, massive. Dundee we saw have not to be taken lightly. I would expect us to be able to get over the line against Dundee, absolutely. The one for me is Hearts. Hearts will be the game that Rangers will be looking at and they'll be expecting us to drop points. That will be the one that they will be banking on. Assuming that they won their previous two games, they'll be banking on Hearts taking points off us. If we win that, doesn't matter what the score is, but if we win that, that's as big a marker they put down as any before we play them. So there is work to be done. Let's not pretend. We'll see how the weekend results go. Yes, we are fortunate at the moment. Luck's going in our favour. Maybe riding the crest of a wave, if you will. But, yep, Aberdeen, this is their season. Bottom half. New manager about to be coming in. Guys want to play for their futures. So, you know, we've got a good record at Hamden. A great record against Aberdeen, but that's never a given as well. The cup is important, but at the same time, at this moment in time, when the league is paramount, it's kind of a it's a unwanted distraction. I'd rather it was just straight down to league business at the weekend, power on and make the momentum. We need to negotiate this semi final. We then see how Rangers go against Hearts, as I say at the top of the show here. You know, Rangers have never been beat off hearts at Hamden, ever. So regardless of how the chips are down, you know, <laughs> do you think it's going to happen? I'm honestly still not convinced. I have zero belief in hearts. And if Rangers were to get to a final with us, you know, listen, I'm always going to put my money on Celtic, particularly in a final. Particularly, hopefully that would be us going for a double or, fingers crossed, it doesn't go that way, obviously. But God forbid it was Rangers going for a treble. I would still fancy us to pick ourselves up and either secure our own double or prevent a treble. But it just shows you, sliding doors moments, Rangers could get to a final and they still are very much in a title race. The important thing for us, I say, is, is to win the first three games. Or at least win the first two. And I would still take a draw. I want a win. But I think a draw. We get into those two games. Theoretically you could afford to lose one. Wouldn't want to. But you could. And I don't think the goal difference swing for Rangers is going to suddenly go that way. So we are in a comfortable position. But let's not be ignorant. Let's not lose sight of the fact that we still are in what is a title fight, it's a title battle, it's a title race that should have never been that we find ourselves here. But 
coming back to it whilst we're on adverts because who wants to listen to some of the garbage that's on there? It's quite interesting. I think so far the callers are as of the expect. You know, folk were probably expecting, you know, blood snorters, shouting, bawling. Everybody that's come on, I think, has been fairly, fairly level. They've been fairly, um, you know, decent in their points. That what they're saying, there's, there's, there's some of them are stating the obvious. What I, I always do find quite amusing or interesting, more to the point, shall I say, is that there's this rewriting of history. There's this revisionism. You know, you had a guy coming on and saying, "We don't do this. We don't do that. We just punt balls into the box." Now, I keep on saying this. That's been Rangers way back to the Gerrard era. Chaos ball. Three quarters of the way up the pitch for the wings. Overload the box with crosses. Someone might get an end off it. The goalie might spill it. Or it gets headed down and it gets smashed home. That's always been the way Rangers play. And I am surprised that you've got people coming on and moaning about that. That's never changed. You know, other callers are talking and singling out guys that I've mentioned as well at the start of the show. Your Lundstrom's, your Goldson, your Tav. These are guys that are, they are, they're serial losers. At Rangers, they're serial losers. Good enough players, but in terms of what they've got, they are perennial, you know, has been. Other, you know, setting runners. That's that's what that's what Rangers are, and that's what I'm saying about when when players are coming into your club and you want to grab them and lift them and tell them what it means to play for that shot. There's not many guys in there that can really sit down and and you know and still that. Who's in East Kilbride? Who was to blame for last night, Sammy? What's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, there's, there's hundreds of them to blame. It was absolute garbage. And I would put, James, I know you've been defending him, but that Tavernier, I would put him right at the top because he's a serial loser. There that phrase. He said himself in a match day programme, not that. I just said that as well. And when it comes to this time of the season, they get scared. They don't have the mentality to finish a season properly. And I don't think you ever truly shake that off. Fake it until you make it. That's what's been happening. And they've done it again. I'm disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. Not only by the results, but by the performance. The last two or three weeks have been garbage. And Conor hasn't done himself any favours. Nope. He's picking the same people that have lost us the league. It's exactly what I said. Until a manager comes in and does a root and branch change, me and myself sitting here as a Celtic supporter will be absolutely loving that. Absolutely. Why are you asking this question, Gordon? Any of you that have been watching the couple of past podcasts, I have rattled on about mentality, mental strength and mindset. It might sound a bit wanky, it might sound a bit boring, it might sound about sort of trying to be intellectual, but it's facts. You need mental strength when it matters, when your back's against the wall, when you get 50 or 60,000 fans on your case, you need to be strong up here. They did. It was almost a perfect align in the stars. They started to win games as we started to lose games. And no matter what you want to say about it, that swing, us losing an eight-point lead, I mean, that's huge. Huge. And I wonder if it makes them concerned. It's quite interesting because uh, we all know about that era as well. It's interesting how many of those guys that got them over the line really could, really should have been there. Side notes. Simon Murray did all right to be fair, but before we go down that route, Mark, I think what I'm trying to, you can 
saying to just how angry Sammy is. Do you know what? I'm going to just fade that one out. Old school fan. You know, that's that's the way my dad would react. That's the way my dad does react whenever we're on a slide. So I can, you know what, I like that. I love that. It's actually, I, I know, oh, I love that. I'm, I don't mean that as in a ha-ha-ha-ha-ha Celtic fan way. I like that. Genuine passion and what that guy's saying is completely true and it's what I've been speaking about in the past few podcasts. Mental strength. You need it up here. You can have all the talent of the day in your feet, but you've got to put it together. You need to have togetherness, a togetherness and a belief that Dijon Sterling's sitting telling us that they don't have. So, you know, what chance have you got? He says it as well. The captain, I touched on it, saying it in programme notes. A book that gets handed out to a stadium full of anticipated, anticipating, waiting, bated breath, excited fans. Wanting to go and watch their team thinking, yeah, my team are going to do it. And then reading that, I'd be like, what? Crazy stuff. But that's the mindset that's sitting at Rangers at the moment, I believe. And again, I come back to it. Remember, I was talking about Butlin's, uh, Butlin's um, press conference and it was all paint by numbers garbage. It was all, you know, it was like a script. You look at any um, time you've got any player from Celtic doing a press conference. They always talk about it. They say it. Mentality. They talk about what we are doing to get better. What we are focusing. They talk about focus. They talk about preparation. They talk about mentality. They talk about desire. Look at Joe Hart. Much maligned. And as I say, is one guy who's, you know, this is his swan song season. And you can see whether you think his performances are brilliant or not. Every single time he's in front of a camera, on front of the crowd, he is giving it his all. You can see the passion oozing out of him. Credibility. He's roaring like a maniac when we're finishing games. And listen to the words that he's saying. That's what Celtic have in spades in that dressing room. Winners. They do. Mm-hmm. So it isn't disastrous on paper. But as we all know, things are not won on paper. So it's in here. It's so in here. That's what wins you tournaments. That's what wins you trophies, leagues, cups. I don't necessarily believe that the pressure was off because they scored that third one. That was negligence from our Yang and Kuhn, not something like Kuhn McGregor. But that was the one thing, that was the one bit of credit I did give them. The one thing they didn't do in that game was stop. Um, we did have a little wobble, but again, coming back to the desire, we kicked on. We got that third, and it was game management, not desire, that made that a draw for us. If your issues are game management, tactics, putting on the wrong sub, those are things that can be remedied. You can't remedy your mindset. If it's so far gone that you don't believe in yourself, then it's a long way back to sort that out. I think that is there's a bit of truth in that but I also think it's I would be concerned if um, it took for my side to basically believe that they had nothing to lose for them to start winning games because it's never always going to be like that pressure is to come back Rangers have always said they welcome the chase but they're alright at doing the chasing bit and in some respects 
that suits us because it makes us push on. Well, I'm just going to stop that there. I'm not going to go the full two hours because that would be absolutely brutal. And I, I simply don't have the. Uh, I just, I just, don't, I just don't have it in me. I, I can't. I, you know, as I say, I, I very, very rarely listen to the super scoreboard. I just wanted to, as I say, at the top of the show, as I've said continually through here, I just wanted to do something a wee bit different because you know me. If you've watched me and you've been watching the shows, I, I just love analysing. I love, you know taking people's opinions or, you know, a manager's words and breaking them down, talking about it, trying to pick the bones over it and see what it means. And I think there, do you know what, there's no surprises there eh, from the, the fans that had been phoned in for the, the Rangers persuasion. And let's face it, that second half is probably going to be chock-a-block with more of those fans. You know, I'm interested to see, let us know what you think in the comments of it. As I said, this isn't a... This isn't a fishing mission. This isn't a, a gloating or a laughing or a, you know, trying to be wide type of thing. It's, it's literally, it's a social experiment, I want to call it, because um, I just think it's interesting. One thing I love, whether you're a Celtic supporter or not, is see if you've got an actual, in, you know, proper passion and you're invested in your, squ your squad, your team, this league. I'll talk to most folk about football, you know, you know, you will always meet people, whether at the pub or your workplace or wherever it may be, or be out in the street, whatever, and they start trying to talk to you, and it's, you know, it's like banging your head against the wall where there's just nothing, there's no comeback, there's no, there's no depth to their point or their argument or whatever it is they're trying to say to you. I prefer if you can have a back and forward. You know that that's what I like. I love I love proper debate, and I'll I'll welcome that with any fan. And I just wanted to look at what some of those people were saying and see what they were thinking. And do you know what? We all know when they go onto the um, the super scoreboard that is hand picked, isn't it? I don't know if you've ever phoned it yourself. They ask you what your point is, and you, you get a feel if if they if they think that you've if they think you're just going to be going on there and shouting the odds and moon howling and you're basically going to be clickbait brilliance. They will bring you on. So I'm very surprised tonight that what we've essentially got has been the the, the opening body of callers. It's been folk that have, they're just telling the truth. They're just sitting there and there's no real shouting or drama or anything like that. They're literally concerned. And what they're doing is, and this is interesting, I don't know if you've noticed this, and it's quick as I say, as Wilson pointed out, 11 days, We've been spun this narrative since Clement came in. We've known from time and time again, going as far back as when Warburton was there. The laws in Glasgow are quite simple when it comes to managers. One's the flavour of the month and one's the class clown. Brendan Rodgers came back against a Beal who, let's face it, they built him up, they built him right up and then he just couldn't do it. But they still believed in the, the narrative of the rebuild, the rebuild, the rebuild. Rogers came back and the you know the media were loving it because there was a lot of our fans, and there still is a lot of our fans that don't want Brendan Rogers out of our club. So it was easy to put that magnifying glass on to Celtic and onto Brendan Rogers. He wasn't I wouldn't go as far as to say he was the class clown, but there was something there to, to poke and jibe at him. And again, coming back to managers, coming back to class, he never rose to it, did he? He just batted it away. And it was a water off a duck's back. It was easy. Kept his counsel professional. Got on with business. As I said earlier on when we were talking about, um, you know, performances dropping, and I, you know, I mention this here again, the one thing that I think Brendan Rodgers did do wrong this season is he eroded um, a lot of the trust that he'd built up, the belief that he'd built up in quite average players in some cases. And I understand he's, not, he's walking a very, very, you know, narrow ledge with that, where, yes, he's stating the obvious, we needed in better quality. But there's ways of saying it. 
and I think he was too direct. He needs to kind of be direct to get it to the board. But this is where the mentality comes in and the man management, which he's normally fantastic at. I just think if you're a player and you continually keep hearing your manager saying that we need better quality, better quality, better quality, more strength and depth and options, and you're one of the guys that's either starting or sitting on the bench, then you're just like, nah, he just doesn't care, does he? And for me, that's why we started to lose those games. Yeah, we had injuries. Injuries are huge. But for me, it was an erosion of belief. And then he was scrambling, scrambling after the window closed to try and desperately win back favour with the players. And it didn't really quite work for him. We found ourselves in a position. And I think now we're only really turning that corner where he's, he's brought it back up. And I think there's varying factors. One, we have to, we have no choice. We can't sink. And he's managed to build up some of those guys. But I think also with the return of the more quality players that we've got, you know, when you've got quality around you in the squad, it just lifts everybody a wee bit. We see the difference that, you know, Carter Vickers makes. He makes anybody that's beside him look a million dollars. You see the improvement, the speed of play, the real ties in the team. So I think that's one factor that started to build it back up. But another one was when the chips were against Rodgers, when we started calling out those bad decisions and they went on the attack by him, all that good girl stuff in the media, you know, going after him with the suspension for calling out refereeing decisions. Because, yeah, do you know what? Call it egotistical. You know, <laughs> call it whatever you will. But see, when it's the odds are stacked against Brendan Rodgers and it's his neck that's well and truly on the line, I don't know what he does, I don't know what he says, but, <laughs> you know, he's not getting taken down. He's not letting you bring him with him. He's not letting you bring him down with you. And he managed to turn the corner and now we're starting to see that belief. Now as we go into these, I keep saying it, championship rounds, that's when your guys in the squad, your Joe Hart, yes, he's only been in the club a couple of seasons, but he's a born winner. Look at his experience. And that's what I'm saying. When you listen to him talking, his desire, his drive, as a guy that's still hungry, yeah, he might be slowing down, yeah, he might not be at his peak, but in his mind, his desire, his passion, it's still as fiery and sprightly as when he was a young guy. And then you've got guys like Cal McGregor, again, might not be the shouty captain, but he's been there, he's lived through it, he's got the experience. James Forrest, you know, he's another one. And then even more recent guys, your Carter Vickers has been there, won trophies, you know, there's plenty across the squad. Look at the other side of town. And I think there's that, for me, the biggest shock that I heard today, and that was the first time I heard that, was that Dijon Sterling um, interview. Let me know what you think of that in the comments, because for me, do you know what? That's a sign of the times. There's too many players in there that are mentally scarred from seasons upon seasons of being, you know, Second place merchants. The fans are questioning, do they have the ball? I don't know. You know, there's still a lot of games to be playing and I will always leave that caveat. There's a lot of football to be played. Yes, I'm confident, but I'm not ignorant that we are in a title race. I'm not ignorant to the fact that we should have been miles out of sight and let it slip. So... A three-point lead, albeit with five games to go, their confidence, their form, dropping and us looking to be on the up. That's not a guarantee. You know, we had a chance against Hearts the last time to go ahead and be choked. Yep. Terrible decisions. Shocking decisions. But we still didn't get over the line. Even when we had the 10 men, we still didn't look like we were doing it. And that game was doomed to fail as soon as that penalty was missed. 
So never take anything for granted. Enjoy these B moments like today. Enjoy the results like Dundee, Ross County. But don't expect them to be the status quo and the norm. Hopefully they will be though. So anyway, as I say, it's starting to be a bit different. I know it's a bit daft, I know it's a bit sort of strange, and hopefully the audio came through, um, not too bad there. But you know what? I'm feeling really good after that. That that interview, come on, the way he's talking, seeing things that weren't there, and then another player essentially telling us that not all is well amongst the squad, that's got to be music to Celtic and Brendan Rodgers' ears. So anyway, thanks again for joining me. As I say, if you enjoy what we do here at Celtic World Order, then we greatly appreciate you showing your support. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give the subscribe icon a wee hit. That way, every time something like this or indeed a live show goes out, you'll get notified in plenty of time to come and join us and join in the chat. If you like the video, you like what you're seeing and hearing, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to help extend our reach, get that fabled algorithm that gets more eyes on it, you help with that, then you can share it. As I say, also check us out at CWOPod1880 on X. You'll also find me, Paddy, and any other contributors. Personal handles on there as well if you want to connect with us on a personal level and see what sort of garbage comes out of our mouth when we're not just talking about Celtic, then you can do that. And also, we're on Facebook and it's at Celtic World Order Podcast. Anyway, thanks for joining me. That was interesting. We've got a semi final to take care of, and we've got five league games to go and push on. Let's get a double, let's go for three in a row. See you later.